this guy. All and I came recording. to do is read comics. And we're, and, and we're recording now. It's in the corner. Oh, oh, I, oh, I see it. This is take <laughs> two. We had to have a timeout take. I'm like, yo, you ready? I was like, yeah. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. So I think we're ready. If not, you're going to hear another, oh, we're back at it again. The, the, no, we don't need to do that. We don't need to do that because it's not an episode. It's daylight. Daylight no, I'm, saying, I'm saying they'll just hear a third take where we start fresh and they have no idea of like, oh, like <laughs> these guys you know were in the back in the, in the behind the alley. Yeah, you want to do a third one? Do you? Do you want to do another no, one? No, I don't want to do a fucking third one. You didn't like this one? I like this one. We can wait for daylight. That way it syncs up (laughs) with the whole recording. We can sit here and just wait for daylight to come. And then and then do a hot take. Clearly. How many we got? We got one, two, we got ten issues, right? Yeah, uh, this is probably my favorite thing that I'm reading, even though we haven't been reading it as connected or coherently as they've been releasing it. But who cares? We're still reading it. Well, it lucky for a lucky for funny choice of word lucky for us they stopped dropping a lot of these because of the uh the, the pandemic and stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, so no, no, no. it kind of don't it, name it let, let, let people try and figure out what for the thing on. because In dinosaurs dinosaurs are back roaming the earth see so, I, I so i say don't name it <laughs> you go straight to it's dinosaurs <laughs> let's do dinosaurs all right <laughs> So dinosaurs are way to, way to keep that open. Dinosaurs are not roaming. Oh, we're so but it's locked. All, it's, it's, now. it's almost like Marvel Comics were like, you know what? Comic Patrol is is not doing this stuff right now, so let's just stop releases for a while. Let's put them on hiatus. They did it for us, really. Uh, yeah, they want everyone to catch up and like actually like really dive into the work and the art and the appreciation for this like shared universe. What do you call this X Men like whole? Uh, you could, I guess you could call it, a, it's not a, I guess you could call it an event. I was going to, I was going to call it a relaunch, but then. Yeah, yeah, relaunch, reboot. It's like a new 52, but it still like gives nods to the old shit. Like yeah. It, it's all continuous, even though they have multiple characters in several titles that don't always seem uh, yeah. continuity. So like, it's a whole other bag of worms. I thought they were going to get rid of that, but I, yeah, there, there are. Which part, which part did you thought? They uh, the character's not being everywhere but they have such like popular characters like oh yeah well them? yeah wolverine's gonna be always gonna be in six books at once it's just the way it is at least they try to make sense of it all but they did and for the most part they do a good job yeah good. so you were looking for a segue yeah that was you, perfect you could literally talk about the man in uh, the iron bones i was gonna save him for last but we could yeah we could do it now i don't I, again i don't care it's just a really good segue i was gonna say if you better hope Sauron shows up in this motherfucker if you're trying to say like 2020 is dinosaur bones coming back from there. Everybody, every time we've been like this person, I hope this person shows up. They usually show up. So that is true. <laughs> so you have to do wish lists. I wouldn't mind fucking Sauron. I don't know what the fuck he'd end up doing, but on one of these prehistoric islands, he seems. Like yeah, we we've seen almost everybody else, but, right in. but yeah, since you're talking, about, let's let's go Wolverine then. Since we, I was gonna say him for last, but since we're on topic, let's do it. it doesn't matter what order we do this in. Yeah, you uh, love him so much. Who I love Wolverine so much? Yes, you do. Yeah, he's awesome. Eh. He's awesome. I don't love I don't love him as much. I don't love him as much as I used to as when I was a kid. You know, you're like a kid. You first discover X Men and, and Wolverine's like the coolest well, the thing ever. Yeah, he's, he's a like, rebel. Yeah. If you're a Raphael fan, you're a Wolverine fan. If you're a Batman fan, you're a Wolverine fan. I was just gonna say that. I was just taking a drink and I was gonna say he's the. Yeah, but Raphael. you know what? You, you know what you didn't say. What what I said so. You son of a bitch. Yeah, but I'm taking water. So you take your little orange slice break, and I'm going <laughs> to keep keep playing the field. I'd, I'd love some orange slices right so now. So would I. I, I, think I, I think I have one <laughs> in my fridge. Like, that's I'm, not even a knock. I'd love it. <laughs> I Hey, man, replenish your vitamin C. Clearly, Wolverine does this. I'm trying to go back on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I wasn't really expecting – I actually – I wasn't expecting that, to have two stories in one book. So it's an oversized issue. Uh Two stories. The which, first one, what, which is a great way to launch uh, an own, like your own independent run off of, like you for this run. They've already had six kind of simultaneously moving comic books, and ever so often they've been announcing they want to do new stuff. And here's your first version of Wolverine, who we've already seen, but now gets his own, I guess, spinoff again. Yeah, of course he's the the first to get a solo, but if, and and it starts with him waking up, piecing himself back together. Apparently, having killed uh, Gene Kid Omega, 
and Domino in like Alaska. <laughs> yeah, Mar- Marvel Girl Gene too, right? Like, yeah, Marvel Girl. Yeah, so well, I yeah, love, that's I love the throwback. Name. So like, even talk about like he's already in his brown and orange, right? Like his maybe best version of Wolverine outfit attire. So yeah, it's it's cool with the uh, what Docs is Docs. I said Docs. It's cool what Don of X relaunch is doing because it has a mixture of new and old costumes. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, we call it Docs for short, but now Docs and Docs. So why, yeah. like, don't stop branding now? I won't. But um, yeah, it's cool how they do the mixture of some newer and some older costumes, and just the like the always great nod of Wolverine up where in the somewhere in the north, just like confused and like running wild. Like again, this is how it started. Like you just see his foot tracks in the snow, and he's trying to figure out what the fuck just happened. Yeah, he's the king of uh, getting roofied the night before and having a piece together how much he fucked up shit yeah which is like classic wolverine yeah this is also written i don't know if you mentioned written by benjamin percy so this one isn't one of the um you did not one of which the, is good uh, it's always nice to have someone yeah. to like break away from the the chain of what's going on in the actual i guess we'll just call it universe or we'll call it the docs hickman verse <laughs> yeah um <laughs> Cause that's great but like you always want fresh perspective and fresh eyes on specific characters to like tap into different kind of elements in yeah you get it yeah yeah i mean hickman can be a little wordy sometimes so it's good to have other books that some of the yeah some of the ones that are spinning off of the main dawn of x title that not to be the quote so yeah the same. logan's uh first story he's he sees uh, marvel go down and then he starts to remember peace back he starts picking up memories of what was, I guess what was going on the days before leading up to? Yeah, about five days, right? What was what was the one? What was the one line when he's they what Gene was going? He goes, "Wolverine does everything too hard." <laughs> I guess you really like that line. <laughs> I did. I thought it was funny. That's when he's um when he's playing with the kids, right? And yeah, they're like this shows that like he's still kind of in that uh, professor like leadership uh, teacher role. As X Men are doing X Men things, because he runs into Kate Pride, like a couple of pages later, and they they go load up a boat and they start talking about uh, like what's going on in I guess her side compared to like his side and all the the new villains that are slowly starting to pop up with this new life that they've created on uh, Krakoa, and obviously, which is like the linchpin to every kind of comic book is like that special flower, the, basically the pharmaceutical that they push, right? Like that's always the backbone to everything. Yeah, um, and, she, and she's telling him how um, the, the product, the flowers are going missing regularly. Right. So it's kind of like, okay, so I'm on this. this there's, there's shipments and stuff missing all the time. So that's kind of what I'm up to. Plus she's right. in her old getup. She's not in the Marauders outfit. So it makes you wonder when this yeah. was... Yeah, timing, right? Yeah, yeah, or, or maybe that's just a mess up by the by the artist. Like, oh, I'll just put her in this without. You. I, I would probably argue anything against a mess up. Like, I feel like everything through this entire one has like a specific, which is awesome because you can kind of see things playing out. But even from the first run of like the first issues of everything, they were doing time jumps like ten thousand, hundred thousand years into the future. So like nods in this comic book run where you see Kate dressed up in old school attire, I feel is going to play into something along the lines with what's going on with Logan. Because again, yeah, you're right. We don't know when this is actually happening, if it's previous to what's going on currently in the timeline, or if this was a future event. Like, we don't know, but we don't really care. As soon as you kind of hear Wolverine up to his, like, uh, detective sniffs and noses and looking for the next kind of mission, you just kind of follow suit. Yeah, and and her, seeing her in her old duds, too, it kind of makes it seem like what she's saying is suddenly a lot more less obnoxious than when she's in her red trench coat. Like she always oh, seems like you, you don't like her pirate get up. But I like it. No, I like it. No, I like it just fine. But she does it. She care when I read her her words. It carries a dub, like it carries a different tone when she's kind of just in her regular old school clothes than when she's in her new Marauder stuff. She seems more like a rebel then. You know what I mean? Right. Um. That's that's just me though. Jump to Baltimore with a CIA CIA agent named Bannister is investigating a group suicide in a lab. So it was kind of like a hard cut. Yeah, is this when he links up with like he gets his own little mini team and shit? Because like that's a pretty badass group that he has. Ooh, Wolverine or the agent? Yeah, Wolverine. Yeah, no, we're talking about the um, the agent with the uh, the shirt with the flowers on it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, he's he, yeah, he's. Yeah, it was a hard cut, but he's just kind of investigating like 
a lab where a bunch of people looks like they committed suicide right. and they find traces of this this new pollen yeah i just really want to get to when he uh links up with like kid omega <laughs> yeah. Grimm, um i think it's like domino which is basically like the x factor like x force x force yeah x force my mistake. um and then they go run off on their own mission right which is always super dope yeah and sage helps him track down the missing flowers so they kind of go to her right and he's and she guides them in the right direction because what was the team you, like you're saying quentin choir yeah, it's Kid Omega, Domino, um, yeah. Marvel Girl, I'm pretty sure Domino, and I think it's just a four pack now. And they've all kind of been stepping up through the entire run too. So like all of them already have, like they're not brand new. So they have a foundation with how their power sets are working in this kind of new climate in this universe and how they work together. Because like that's been one of my favorite things with most of the titles, just to see the lines up of who they choose to put on the roster. Yeah, the lineups are cool, yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about the, the best reveal of this comic? Because I don't think we're going to do spoilers for this one. Like This one's worth reading and taking time for. The whole over... Oh, the the first story or the second story? You want to jump to the second yeah, story? Yeah, the first, first story. Because that's when, uh, like... The Order of they, X? They, 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 yeah, yeah, they talk to Magnus and Apocalypse, and then there's that reveal, right? Or is that the second story? I think it's the second one. Oh, okay. Because the first one deals with um, the Order of X, right? Which is the the uh, that religious group. Okay. There's that. There's so there's the religious group who they worship mutants so much that they actually want to become them, which makes sense. And, and replace them, so they're just like, yeah, just lunatics. Uh, the Russian Order of X, yeah. I mean, they have a dream. You can't deny them their dream. They just want to be mutants. They just want to eat. Yeah. Well, they they believe that eating mutants is like the most sacred thing <laughs> to do. So they eat the pollen. And scientists and haven't disproven that that's not true. So <laughs> <laughs> they're going hard in the paint for that one. Yeah. So that, that was, that was kind of a different, it was cool. It was a different take that there's a, a group or a, a sect that's so in love with mutants that they're actually going to try and kill them. <laughs> I mean, if there's anything this series has proven is that there's no short of villains after these guys for everything that they have. Right like no days off but i i, I like the first story because it kind of led back to like wolverine noir kind of it was more sleuthing and less snit snit yeah it was it, that, that's all it was really there was barely and there was like barely any of snit snit because it was just like you said like we said from jump it was him waking up in the tundra having killed his teammates or seemingly killed his teammates and then start and, to set up a, a potential villain that's going to be a reoccurrence down the line. Yeah, the Order of X, yeah. So it was, it was like a, it wasn't very, yeah, very set up heavy. There wasn't much action. Uh, the second story, however. Cut two, yeah. Cut two. This one was the more intriguing one in terms of action. Well, shit's going on. Like, it doesn't take much for uh, the team to, like, fall into, oh, no, we got to fight our way out of here? Yeah. Gateway was the other dude. That's in it. Oh, right, yeah, because they teleport to... Uh, and and to Gateway, like, kind of an MVP during this entire run, too. Like, we don't really talk about him much, but he's kind of so integral to what's going on on that island. Yeah. Like, ev everyone needs his input or, or, like, just him as uh, spiritually <laughs> aligned as possible because most, mm -hmm. most of his, like, intro scenes is him just balanced out on uh, a cliff and then someone screaming at him and then he freaks out and falls. Yeah. Not in this one, but... No, he's a, yeah, he's around. He he's good to have around in all the books. Just be, not all the books, but a lot of the books because get you from here to there. In an yeah, and so that's, again, that's a constant good. connection to Krakoa. Yeah, yeah. But as for the uh, uh, Magneto and Apocalypse conversation you were talking about earlier, it's Omega Red yes. shows well, I, up. I thought you were gonna save that, but yeah, your boy finally came through. You've been itching. Yeah. That was huge. That was like, I was like, oh, fuck. I, I was like, when is he going to show up? When is he going to show up? He's going to show up. Some, and then he just randomly just comes, shows up. <laughs> <laughs> like perfect weapon. Like they just finished beating up all the sub bosses. And then you, you kind of see the, like the paneling for his first reveal too is pretty damn awesome. Him coming to the portal. He's all like beat, beat up. up too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's been in it, right? So. He's like, I hear you're offering amnesty. <laughs> and Wolverine's like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and he can go through the portal like just like that, right? Like that's one of the fun little tricks that they've set up with this whole like the flower and obviously only mutants can go through the the portal like they were everyone was just assuming for the first kind of set of these comics oh you would just get uh heroes to come through and anytime it was a villain like apocalypse it was usually like greeted by hey man we can peace treaty and like work it out this is the first time where it's like nah <laughs> not gonna happen that way yeah i'm yeah. just here i'm here now help me out 
so when Wolverine goes through the portal to investigate where Omega came from, where that portal was from, it, right. it leads back to Paris and he finds a trunk full of dead bodies. <laughs> like, in a, sorry, a car with a trunk full of dead bodies. I'm going to say uh, Wolverine's a better detective than Batman. I'm just going to throw that out. Because <laughs> he got the sniff sniff nose? Yes. And uh, like he actually has to like go through the motions of it because he can't rely on like a bat computer or like a bat belt. Yeah, that's true. He can't, yeah, he doesn't know. But there's, there's, no... there's a lot, there, again, there's a lot of imagery, especially the conversations that he's having with Magneto where they just show Wolverine in silhouette and he kind of has the cowl. Yeah, they got, they got it, the ears, right? Yeah, yeah. It's working more for him than I would for Brucey B. So, but again, you get a lot, you get a lot of uh, exposition and plot with Magneto's conversation with Wolverine talking about like what they think the problem is. Yeah, it's great. There's that and then the where he's just, he will not accept Omega Red has changed. And that's no, not at all. That's kind of what I like about Wolverine in this whole relaunch is that he seems to be the one of the only ones, only characters. The skeptics that's, are like doesn't believe in uh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah. not all in. He's not no. all in with like he's in it, but he's kind of like he'll fight nah. for you, he'll fight, he'll work with you. But if yeah. you ask him to completely sign up, he's like, nah. Yeah. It's and like all mutants to are welcome. To getting like cigars and booze to his island. So yeah, he's like all mutants are welcome. He's like no, nah. nah. most mutants are welcome. Because, like, uh, Omega Red ends up in, like, this clay cave kind of thing with, like, tubes hooked up to him to basically, like, recharge, right? So Wolverine can, like, go visit him and basically does that and kind of has this, just looks him up and down. And he's like, no, nah, I don't like this. Yeah, because you're right. They don't actually let him come in and walk around freely. They actually do lock him up because they want to make sure or detain him because they want to make sure what he's saying is legit. So yeah, you're right. Omega Red's not just coming through the portal and then like playing with children. He's, you know, he's <laughs> seeing him. He's, he's in the portal and like, okay, we're, we're we'll house him, but we kind of got to figure out, we got to suss it. Yeah. Out. We, we got to feel him out. And Wolverine's kind of already decided, nah, like this not going to work out. There's so, a cool, there's this cool line that just so I want to say that uh, Wolverine, and when he's talking to Magneto, when he's, when he's, Magneto's basically trying to convince Wolverine that it's, you know, Mega Red's okay. He's mutant. He's, right. And he's kind of like, resurrection's irrelevant. Immortality, don't erase trauma. <laughs> I know that better than you. <laughs> it's like, okay. Like, Sounds he's, like that character pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he's kind of like, he's kind of like, yeah, no matter what happens here, you, we can come back to life and shit, but it doesn't erase what happened. This guy's this guy's sick to his marrow or whatever. <laughs> and and that's one of the reoccurring themes throughout the entire book. Like it seems like a lot of like ghosts are coming up and like skeletons in the closet that I guess the powers that be, Professor X and Magneto thought we can just brush over it, but you're seeing, especially now, a lot of stuff. We'll talk about other issues and stuff like that. Um stuff's bubbling up from the past where you can't avoid it now. Yeah. And that's that's one thing we were worried about. I I probably we probably talked about it too before the start, is that the the whole reviving things i didn't want it to get too out of hand like oh yeah. he dies and he goes back he does, and it's kind of going that way but at the same time they have characters like wolverine that are, that are locking it down and rooting it like no this is like you you come back to life and you're still a little fucked up like right it's not it's not easy like it's easy but it's not simple right so i kind of you know we don't know what's going to happen to these like uh, basically, pod people. We don't know if they're fully actual mutants. Yeah, First, they, like, they, they could be a completely different like zombie, yep. something, something else, right? So. And yeah, I think you've been saying for a while that somewhere yeah. down the line that something like that is going to be revealed. Yeah, I, I, I'd appreciate like clone people or like clone wars, and everyone's like, oh well, I'm not a real one. Like you're a fracture of a fracture of a fracture. Especially yeah. the, like the few mutants that keep getting killed, like they've been like duplicated how many times? Yeah. So if they found out down the line, like you're that much of a fraction of who you actually were, like yeah. just the mind fuck of that, I think would be. That'd be crazy. Yeah, that'd be crazy. And you learn that every every time you die, you lose like five percent of your soul or something. <laughs> it's just you know what I mean. Anyways, you're never coming back. Oh yeah. Anyways, um, so he suggests Wolverine goes to Obliette in France for someone worse than him. When you're talking, when he was talking to Omega Red, so he's kind of like, all right, well, I'll go check it out. And what he learned, <laughs> what does he discover there? <laughs> vampire nation yeah that's i was like i hope you're not talking about that like left turn because that, yeah. was, like a left, that was like a left turn i said like, oh we're, we're doing this okay there's they're they're really not pulling anything back in these books i mean you, you constantly need threats i guess with a character in a lead like wolverine they have to be at such a high level because he's already deal, dealing with like defcon what five shit or four yeah. shit yeah, on the island. So his solo stuff's got to be some bonkers motherfucker shit. But if this means Morbius is somehow gonna make his way into 
the <laughs> could be X-Men Morbius, movie. Morbius, maybe Blade will be in something. Maybe right because we're know. we're still expecting these like uh, and like these in, I don't want to say ancillary characters, but like these big characters titles that are getting included. Like Fantastic Four is one of them, right? So that's right. Yes, yes. Well, we're covering that not today, is it? No, I think that's the next no, week. next week. Is yeah. Or but what you would overall? What do you think? There's a lot going on in this one. We don't want to give away everything. Overall, what do you think of the first one for Wolverine and his launch? I liked it. I liked it. It's it was it was uh, it wasn't very snick snicky. Even nope. this one, even this one wasn't that much. So I kind I, I like where it was going. The first the first one was less actiony, but I kind of like where it's going, right? Or where it's setting it up to go. I'm I'm interested to read more. This one. I tone. didn't. I didn't. Yeah, this one I wasn't crazy with the whole vampire thing, but at least it's something different than guys with power dampeners. And that was weird. And then obviously we didn't get how he ended up killing a couple of his teammates, but that's I guess the long con that they're setting up for. Yeah, for the first. Yeah, just the reveal of Omega Red kind of has everybody locked in to be like, oh, this is gonna pay off sooner or later, right? So that's always when you bring back maybe arguably we we got to do a list at some point his best rival. He's Wolverine? up there. Yeah. Omega. Omega's like top five rival for Wolverine. Oh god, yeah. yeah they have well they have yeah, deep history, right? Um, so and yeah, you, but, we, you, there is the, the, the vampires we'll say are after something. You and you would think it would be connected to eating mutants for to turn <laughs> mutants, right? Like, enough, yeah, that's exactly that's that's what was like that like that was the connection missing. I was like, Oh, like if you if you ate it and you went zombie mutant, I was like, Okay, like I can run with this, but like yeah. it's completely separate from like that running unless i missed a line of dialogue or something coming up later you may have do you remember how it ended uh not really okay so do, do you want no, like, that's it okay all right i want to Re- recommend all right we'll, we'll keep i thought we we're just going full blast but we'll keep some spoilers that's cool at least for the first this is the first we'll read very true very we can true. spoil the shit out of excalibur six or uh Fallen Angel Six. Yeah, well, that we're going to. We're gonna go do. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're on Wolverine. What, you wanna do X Force Five and Six? Yeah, let's run it. Let's do Wolf, Wolf, uh, blah, 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 Wolverine. Let's do X Force Five and Six. So we left off X Force Four when, remember, Domino, Wolverine, and, and Quentin Quire were trying to jump to the portal, and then it yeah, they're, 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 blew they're, up. Their their mission to get in and kind of destroy that other side. Yeah, and Domino didn't jump, but. Wolverine. Quentin and, and Wolverine did, and Correct. they got split in two. So Correct. This, so, but open with him just ah, yeah. it, 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 obviously extreme pain. But it was great. Like oh my gosh, it was yeah, it was awesome. Well, X, X Force. This is one of the better. Yeah. This is one of the best ones running, I believe. I would uh, say, especially when you figure out that the villain for this is like that peacock dude. Who, yeah, like, with the, with like, the tattoo. Yeah, I think. He, maybe top three villains in all of these runs like yeah like that he's already got an order set up and basically like his league of doom and a, like a legit plan of like maybe it ties into like either the vampires or the eating of mutants but he's literally pulling dna off as a meaning as many mutants as he can find yeah. and creating a new subset of mutants there's a lot of fucking muty muty shit going on isn't there? yes That's yeah a lot of me stuff this one is also benjamin percy i think we everybody knows that already but anyways we will say it again. Yes. Um, and then you get a good look at how the X Force runs. Oh wait, no, no. This, I went to number six. Uh, number five is the so after yeah, the portal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Wolverine's just like. <laughs> so he gets <laughs> chopped that. off. At, he gets chopped off at the belly when the portal blew up. He Quentin Quire lost his head, and Wolverine lost. He got split right down the middle. Still around, but all of the troops don't know that, so they yeah. keep like moving forward and like, oh, he's got to be dead, right? Like, and he just keeps fucking killing people. It's yeah. so good. It's one of like the greatest cold opens for a comic book. Half like, a body, just bloody and raw, and like they all just keep like moving closer and like trying to shoot him dead, and then he keeps finding ways to just snick. <laughs> yeah, it's it's and like sever them. Oh, I was I was laughing. Were you laughing when you were reading this? Yes, I was. I was having a good laugh. Like he just yeah, <laughs> I'm like this motherfucker. <laughs> You, you can't keep him down. Like he, no. His will to kill is so strong, especially in the name of, like, I guess, good. Yeah. So I love I love these specific books because, obviously, they've already established on Kokoa that there's a new set of rules, and a lot of them are Boy Scout rules, right? Like, can't kill, don't fuck around with humans, leave them alone. But books like X-Force, where they're like, yeah, we operate outside of those laws, yeah. are the best because it's basically just limbs flying and humans dying left and right. 
<laughs> I also would like to highlight the um, the little scuffle between Gateway and Black Tom. <laughs> Who, and Gateway was just chilling, getting his, mon- his meditation on, right? And Black Tom is like low key becoming one of the funniest and maybe one of the most power- powerful on that island. He's insanely like, powerful, but he doesn't understand his power set, which is no. But he, to the to credit for this issue, he, like his he manifests his head from nature around Gateway and like just scares him. <laughs> yeah, you there? And just keeps fucking with it. And like Gateway's like what? But like yeah. the, the artwork and how they like tie together like roots, vines, bushes, rocks to make yeah. like, space. His teeth are all each a flower, like a giant like, flower for teeth. The detail and awesomeness of that it was great. But again, going back to what you're saying about his power level, like it must be astronomical, right? Yeah. Like he's yeah. deadly approaching omega levels if this stuff keeps going up. Right? Yeah, because he he's essentially an elemental now. He's based he's like Marvel Swamp thing right now, which is he just doesn't right understand up, that. Right up your alley. Yeah, right up my alley. But he's just he's just such a goof. <laughs> I, th- I thought you were going to shout out the best uh, exo suit I've seen in a long time. I was Forge. just about to. Forge coming in with the, like, yeah. the, like it reminded me, obviously, of, like, the aliens, uh, what's it, the the turbo loader? The exoskeleton, that, yeah, yeah. The yeah. exoskeleton thing, but, like, obviously complete to Krakoa. Like, it's all alien and kind of, like, different yeah, levels of, like, vo- uh, roots and vines, and, like, it looks like a thorax, and, like, it looks like a bug and stuff like that. Like, it's, yeah. so, it's so cool, and Obviously, Forge is the one that's wielding this bad boy, which is great. That's exactly what I was going to say next was Forge's badass exoskeleton with wings. <laughs> but um, um, if you thought that wasn't enough fun, they cut back to Wolverine still killing like troops. Yeah. And like, he's got that one panel where like it's half his body, but he's like knuckles deep in the, in the back of one of the dudes. And his smile is like completely Joker. Yeah. Like, he, <laughs> so it's it, like... Wolverine is the best Batman and Joker apparently going on in, yeah. in, in Marvel Land. So yeah. another shot fired. Yeah. But like he kills that one dude and then finally all the troops like just open up and like there's that one panel where it kind of looks like flowers, but it's not. It's his body riddled apart with like blood and uh, bullet wounds. Yeah. And he just, just gets laced. How many guys yeah, did he take down? He took down like <laughs> half a dozen guys easy <laughs> with no legs. <laughs> And was smiling through it. Yeah. Uh, and, ag- and again, not really dead after this, right? Like, this slows him down, but just gives enough time for Domino and uh, Forge to come through. And then Forge has, like, the best job ever, where he picks up the heavy-ass one side of Wolverine and the heavy-ass side of the other side and just slams them together in his exo suit. We get I some... Yeah, yeah. That. yeah. We, I was going to say, we get some Domino... Um, character development too here where she you, you learn that her her luck is lessening like it's since she's le- since she's gotten out of the um stasis pod with the you know the shit she was being experimented on when they're ripping her skin off yeah yeah like knows that part of her power is gone too like her she still is lucky but not as lucky not as, as lucky yeah. yeah and the fact that like she's now like they've completed her body it's like patchwork with like Krakoa like she's kind of has an exoskeleton in but yeah, it's not like her arm, right? Her. Like she, she's trying to make it work, but you can kind of see like she feels out of pocket. Like she's not fully herself. Like she's not doing the same sort of domino moves where she would just be jumping all over the place and hitting all these crazy shots. She has to rely on all of this. Like I don't know what to call like this techno organic. Um, yeah, it's like a, it's like a she, bio. Like, she, yeah, she, she thing. or just shields and shit like that, right? Like she's leaning on that more. Yeah, and so you got you counterproductive she's, she's, to what she used to be. Yeah, plus she's mad too, and Beast is trying to like when in the in the, in her heads up, Beast is trying to calm her down. Right, like they're, they're they're literally just uh, executing everyone left and right, left and right, left and right, and then yeah. finally it looks to be calm, and there's one left, and Domino's ready to just like skin him alive. Yeah, and you then you get the yeah the nice back and forth between Beast and Domino. <laughs> Beast and like Beast, chill. Beast coming off as like like one of another one of like my MVPs because he's in these p- positions of power. And you don't see him flex too hard until like he really needs. To. Well, we'll you, we'll talk more about him in the next issue because he does. There's. But, but this 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 issue ends with yes, um, Domino calms down and they take a captive so that he can get interrogated. Mm-hmm. But there's really the nice scene between Domino and Wolverine, where like they're done their job for the day. Like it's shift change because everything now goes to like Beast and Marvel Girl, but they go off to like watch the sunset. And just kind of fucking let go, 
but you kind of find out that they can't really do that. Yeah. Um, like Wolverine says, like, uh, like whiskey helps the numbing. So like now you know how what like why he's so much of an alcoholic and why like that's another level to like why he needs to drink. He just needs to like forget all the shit that he's remembered. Yeah, yeah. I will say um, one other thing is Warpath or not Warpath. Why do you call him Warpath? I keep wanting to call him Warpath. Gateway Gateway does a thing in the fight and retakes down that chopper. Oh shit. <laughs> He's just chilling off to the side. It's like, what are you doing here? I was, <laughs> like, I, was look, yeah, I, was look, I was looking at my notes and it just says, Gateway does a thing with an exclamation mark. <laughs> <laughs> he does a good thing. Yeah, he just shows um, up with the chopper. The guy's like, what the? <laughs> and again, that goes back to like the, the cool team that they've assembled for X-Force, right? Like yeah. they've, put, they've put these pieces in that, I don't want to say are complimentary. They just know how to step up to help the next dude that maybe isn't stepping up, right? Like they're all just, they're all buzzer beater like the, they all want to take the last shot like they're all like yo if the game's on the line you can put it in my hands yeah or at least that's how i see it um the comic ends with beast and marvel girl interrogating uh i guess dude the agent and when marvel girl finally like taps in his head you figure out it's peacock dude that's behind all this shit yeah and you find out the beast these are the merc guys and and um I know in the in the in the text at the end. So the, yeah, they've they've like you said, they find out Peacock dude sent them there. But Beast may have also reached out to them privately, and they don't know why. It's kind of in the, it's not in the book. It's in the text afterwards when they when right. they, you know those white pages with the. I was like, oh okay, Beast may or may not have reached out to them. Yeah, but then like the but, then that leads into the second or sorry the sixth issue better because yes. yes. He, he talks about how he's like the conductor of this orchestra that is X Force. Yeah, and like he has those great lines about like there's spotlight melody where he like he looks at a uh, Kid Omega, right? And others are harm- harmonic in the background. And I think he's talking about like uh, Domino, um, mindlessly uh, beating drums, which is and crashing cymbals, which is Wolverine, uh, versatile playing melody of uh, me- melodies. So like he he has different ways of talking about how each member of the group is his giant orchestra. And then he gets to the, the the end where he talks about he's the conductor. So like you're seeing Beast in a completely different light too, right? Like his confidence and kind of- It's, going to his, it's getting to his head as well. Yeah, like he's got big ego, right? Yeah. But like even the panel of him just posted up in his chair, like he looks more regal. Like he, uh, who's it, Sage, who's also in the yeah. Yeah. Uh, headquarters. Like she's up close and like working on the screens, but he's so like, He's in the chair. Back. Yeah, like he's like chilling back kind of thing. It's like I haven't I haven't seen Beast in this light. I like it so far, but like you you wouldn't be surprised if this is his downfall. It well, yeah, because I have no like he's. I don't know if I want to talk more about Beast now. If I want to talk to, at the end, we'll, we'll talk about it now. He's I saw it as like I like the attitude change. I think it's kind of cool. It's a good character development, but he's he's also a massive hypocrite. Because um, um, if 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 you follow back like with the history of all this, when he was, when he learned that Scott Cyclops had put X Force together, he called him the mutant Hitler. Like that's, <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like he's like, you're the but, you're the. I mean, I can explain it. That was before he kind of knew what was going on. Like they, right. they put Beast in a position where one, he was learning way more shit than maybe he wanted to learn, but two, like. All of them have had to now make the solid decision that it's us versus them, and that's made a lot of them more militant. Right. No. In, in the in the confines of Dawn of X, it, I get it. I like it. But if you look back at the longer, like the larger scope of things he said to Scott, uh, the whole fact that when he was he's the one who brought back I don't even remember all this back in uh, about twenty thirteen when he brought the original X Men back. He brought, right. He went. He went back in time. And brought the original the five OGs back with him to try and help the team remember who they were and stuff like that. And that, that just fucked everything up. Like he's he overreaches nowadays, I, I notice, and it's kinda he's just so, being he's being hypocritical, which is which is fine. You're allowed to do that, but watch for Cyclops to finally take Beast original position if Beast is finally gonna take Cyclops position and then Cyclops be like, yo, Beast, you're going too far. Like, you're becoming a Hitler kind Possibly, of shit. Yeah. That would, I love, I, I can't wait for that. I can't wait for Cyclops to be like, what? So like, I'm the Hitler, huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mine. 
Nine. <laughs> yeah, this one's weird. This one was different because they're in the teams in Terra Verde, right? And Black well, Tom. Oh yeah, go on. No, yeah, but I was gonna say Black Tom escorts Xavier there to to sign the peace treaty with them. Right. And while they're there, they're attacked by like botanical mans. <laughs> like it's like yeah, the, the these... telefloor floronics, floronics, yeah. telefloronics. Yeah. Yeah. It's like oh, interesting. I was gonna say it's a different uh, kind of issue because there's that recon mission that Marvel Girl and Beast go on. And you see, like, Beast, like, punch a dudes in the face and shit like that. Like, Beast is so, like, forward aggressive, like, attacking and shit. Like, for me, this is so out of context for how I've ever seen him. Yeah, it's badass. They, that's when they go to the to visit the president, right? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the botanical people. kidnapped by the, the botanical, botanical people. people. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then there's that nice little new villain is something that's definitely coming up quicker or sooner than later. And the fact that the president's son was kind of hip to what was going on as well. Yeah. And I, I think basically like one of the leaders of botanical yeah. people. Uh, yeah. I just going to say that he, he thinks his son was kidnapped when in reality, his son's leading. Like volunteered, basically. Yeah. yeah. What? So there, there's zombies, there's mutant eating people, there's botanicals. And, well, there's more. I, I'm already going to get confused with as many villains that all these motherfuckers have to keep dealing with. Oh, there's 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 an insane amount, there's an insane amount. But I I really thought that was cool how we're talking about the evolution of Beast too. When he tried, are we talking about this? The yep. his last, he he basically tries to kill the president's son. Yeah. By rewiring his his mental like his mind into attacking himself, like so the 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 botanical stuff in his body. Years of years of cerebro finally played paid off with yeah. mapping the and the I was like mind. I was like wow I was like that's fucking cold blooded yeah. <laughs> I, was, I did not expect Beast to do something like that and I was like, like he basically he, he tried to give him a self destruct yes but the whole twist was like oh you can't self destruct something that's not what you thought it was and this is cool because it goes to what we're saying about Beast kind of getting ahead of himself. Because mm-hmm. now he's getting ahead of himself by trying to assassinate this dude, and, and really he just you couldn't do it. A it's a monster. A fail, yeah, it's a failed a failed attempt. And then you get the nice panel where you think the president's son is back in a hospital room recovering, like his father comes and visits him. But then as soon as he leaves, like his face melts away, and then he kind of like slimes himself out into the vine until he reforms outside as like this, like they've 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 already evolved botanical people from the start of this issue to the end of this issue. They already look like completely different things. Yeah. Because like he's already like an Omega <laughs> botanical. But the, but the coolest thing about that that panel and when he's slipping out of the out of the um the hospital and whatnot and forming into his new body, you're still getting the 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 word blocks of Beast talking about how cocky he is. He's like I'm right, all yeah. you know, I'm always fine with it. I'm never wrong. And meanwhile it's like Yeah he's a. Uh, He's uh, kind of reassuring, like, why they have to take this, like, heavy-handed approach to certain yeah. things. Yeah, meanwhile, it's like, your plan fucked up, man. You created a monster, so hope you enjoy that. <laughs> so it's kind of, like, I like the the beast, but at the same time, I'm kind of like... You bro, can't wait for him to get his comeuppance. I can't wait for, yeah, because I'm not used to him being this arrogant. It's like, oh, yeah, man, you're smarter than that. Everybody's got to be militant. Like, this is what yeah. Professor X put on everyone. Like, yo, we're taking it back. From, from Jump, from that first speech where he's talking about where he sent off that giant, uh, like universal commercial to everyone in their head, and it's just like, "Hey, man, mutants right. are tired of getting fucked over." That, that, that makes sense for Charles because he has to be. Like, well, it makes sense for Beast too. It's just, it's well, yeah, just... but hearing, but the, I'm saying when everyone, like mutants across the board, when hearing that, they're all like, "Okay," like they all, yeah, fair, oh, yeah, fair flip, enough. Flip that switch. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so I get what you're saying. Any of those passive mutants were no longer like, like Beak is militant now. Yeah, Beak. which is which is fine to see. <laughs> Beak. <laughs> Are you hear me? Are you hear me? Beak. Beak. So we'll set. We'll jump to the, the our next double header, which is the new mutants five and six. Not bad. This is it's getting get, better. Getting better. Slow slow burn. And this um, is this is the return to the team up in space. Correct. Which is and much better than the first couple ones that were kind of like, we were kind of like this is like the weakest book. <laughs> it was, but the, I feel like their strength was splitting the books and splitting the teams because like the B storyline for the next issue was awesome. Like I love the whole boom, boom angel. Yes. And beat shit. Right. Like all that stuff is yes. great. But uh, because they spent so much time 
making me read about these individual characters that are up in space. Like I love issues like this where it's just basically Sunspot trying to hit on Bird Lady for yeah. like yeah, half the right. book. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, like this just makes me laugh. Like this is what I want to be reading. Yeah. Meanwhile, death, like death real shit yeah. happening in the background, right? So her name is Death Bird. There you go. Oh, well, I like Bird Lady. Bird Lady sounds good too, purple Bird Lady. And she's like, she seems so out of his league, and he's just like, yeah, <laughs> let's let's do this. What's up? Well, there's that line. He's like, uh, uh it's like it's, it's not a big deal. Like, uh, I, I sometimes buy uh, buy countries like uh, yada yada yada, and everything that she he says, like she counteracts it, and she's like, I am a big deal. I buy planets like like my money's long. And he's like, well, you know, like that just that just that just turns him on more. He's like, <laughs> he's like, okay. Playing hard to get. I like this, and I, I found that entertaining because I don't. He Bobby kind of annoyed me before, but I I liked him in this situation because right. his attitude played well against hers. I, I enjoyed that. Usually comes and off as a little too heavy handed. I'm kind of like, all right, yeah, I get it. You're arrogant. Yeah, to, but it to counterbalance out. the character uh, analysis or growth with Bobby, I won't say growth, but just like the fun to dive into his character is uh, they give Magic the Death Commandos. And she just goes to like town on these motherfuckers. Yeah. Which is great. Like, I mean, it opens with Gladiator, which I kind of like breeze over because I'm not a fan of Gladiator. But uh, Death Commandos are basically like the Black Ops m- mercs, the, like uh, guns for hire. And so when they finally like reach up to the shit, because they're, they're after a bird lady or like a bird lady. Crystal. Well, this is, the, this is the twist because you said you breezed over the Gladiator stuff. So Oracle, you know, his right hand, yeah, his right hand chick, she actually hires them. To take out Deathbird because she doesn't want that back in she are like she's because Deathbird's she's a bad yeah well she's 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 bad right they they're bringing her to mentor her niece right Ilion um, Leandra's daughter Ileana <laughs> yeah they he they want her to mentor the daughter but Oracle's like nah we don't want her back here so she hires the Death Commandos to to intercept the the, the team coming back. And it let, does not work out as planned. No, no, not with magic. Not my girl magic on board. Magic kills it. Yeah. And like they have those fun little lines where like they obviously like break into the ship and they all like split up. And magic's all gung ho with the leader and just telling all the other troops what to do. Remember, when, she's remember she's sorry to cut you off, but she's a a Krakoan general. Yeah. Right. So we you forget that because it's, it's like a teeny book. This is like the teen team, but she's actually a general with like Cyclops and and Bishop and they and, and they pulled her away from that, right? Like yes. probably her strength, right? Like if she was thought the island, everyone would kind of understand how like how much she runs shit. But the fact that they threw all these kids off in space and they let them be kids for a little bit, and then when real shit started happening, you'd see who the kind of strong archetypes were stepping forward with. Yes. But I just love when she finally like meets up against um, Flaw, uh, Impernova. And uh, Offset, she keeps asking them, like, do you want to make out with me? Do you want to make out Like, no. are you human? <laughs> and it's just, like, a setup for her to, like, slice their heads off, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was weird. He's like, no. They're all, they're all like, no, no, no. And like, then, how many legs do you have? Like, oh. She pulls yeah. out the, the magic sword. And what, was the, what was the line? It was, like, because it was, obviously, they're gonna, we were either going to fuck or fight or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so she had like, my last note of this is just um, Ileana handles her business. <laughs> she does. Uh, yeah, I gotta say, bad call because it was fuck or fight. And you. That's what was the line. Yeah, sure. fuck or yeah, fight. Yeah. Quick question Are any of you human? And they all say no. And she fucking <laughs> swipes them with the crazy sword. Yep. Yeah, because it's not, <laughs> that's right, because you're not allowed to kill humans. So she's like, all right, I can kill all you. <laughs> so she does. Easily. But like yeah. then they cut to like each different room where all the new moons are just steadily handling all these death commandos, yeah. which is awesome. They built up all these death commandos. It's like these crazy aliens that you thought were gonna like put up a fight with these guys, and they get worked. Like one of them just like punch yourself. But I can't remember her name. Punch yourself. Punch yourself. And she makes dude punch himself to death. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like just laughing because like that's what you want from these guys. Like they've been waiting to give us big fights with these guys. It's more been fish out of water and kind of understanding their dynamics between each other. Yep. So when you get these issues, they're more fun because they finally get to play. Uh, it's karma. You were talking about. Yes. Karma makes, makes the big dude bunch himself so many times that he dies, but yeah. And then they're, they blow up the ship. And, uh, <laughs> and then, so, uh, yeah, you see, uh, was it Mondo? Fuck. What's his name? Just floating out in space. Yes. Like the, the, the two guys that wanted to duck the, the fight in the beginning. Yeah. They spent yeah. most of it just drinking. 
and then they're the front and center just floating off into space, which is pretty funny. Yeah, they uh, but so not a lot happens in this, but it's Mondo it was, and Chamber. I, well, I, I again, I think it sets up. It's fun. No, I like that. Probably really, yeah, really well, and let you know like what Smasher and kind of the other set are planning with uh, yeah. Gladiator. Yep, I like this one. But and then yeah, and then you were saying earlier, um, issue six goes back to the the Boom Boom and Armor team. Yeah. And this and this was a great fucking read because the whole like build up to like this point was fun still and just like a good understanding of like there's this whole other mutant set that's like a cartel and they want to like be in on the drug money and all that stuff right yeah so like even these mutants that have spent painstakingly spent time to get as far away from any mutant issues they still can't have peace was great right like literally in the middle of nowhere on a farm in nebraska beacon angel have to be have been fighting off these guys so it finally hits ahead now because like boom boom's arrived armor's taking shit blob's doing his stuff right like you think that it's going to work out but there's so many twists to how this comic pays out well and speaking of glob he, his first panel is just like he's yelling at maxine and manon the two twins that made the guards shoot each other and he's like why did you make them kill each other and maxine and uh mono right Monto? manon yeah not are definitely going to be issues like that's what this book showed me if anything right are going to be like some somewhat of problems down the line yes based on their power set and how they use their power set and they're relatively new they they've only they were only created i think in like 2017 2018 as villains and then they joined up for this so right so going, going, back, to that, going back to that wolverine trust can you ever really trust a reformed villain yeah and you get um even though glob was was mad at them for the whole killing the people thing. Beak's like, whatever, man. They got what they deserved. Like, they came in and threatened my kids. And as soon as he says that, bam! <laughs> <laughs> my, my notes is, my notes is, Beak beaks and gets booked. <laughs> that, that works, yeah. <laughs> That's all I noticed was, I was like, what is that? Oh, right, right. So they use, they learn to use the they, I mean, when I say they, I mean Maxine and the twins learn and use the guards to attack the Goldbeard. Right. Right. They, rather than kill them, they're just like, all right, let's keep these guys busy. And the rest of the the team is trying to get beat to like the truck so they can. He's bleeding out. Yeah. yeah, he's, ble- he's bleeding out right now. Everyone's freaking out. Um, and, and, and there's that cool panel of Angel just spewing venom on a couple of the, I guess, uh, what is it? What's the country again? The Costa Perdita. The, Pardita, yeah, one of the Parditans, um, as like beasts like crying out. Um, so it's cool. And then cut to Boom Boom outside. Who's just, depowered, by the way. Boom Boom and Armor are depowered right now, and they are just hand to hand. They're fucking yeah. putting everybody down, right? So, yeah. like, strength on your team. Um, they finally get Beak out, and then that's where you get the great uh, standoff. Cho- choose, or, yeah, choose or lose standoff. Yeah. Because uh, B- Big Boss ends up. I think it's his Beak's father that he comes It is, yeah. Goldbeard. I don't know. We just call him Goldbeard. He comes out with, yeah, with Beak's dad at gunpoint. And just puts the, the chamber to the head. And basically, you're going to have to choose one, but one of these guys isn't going to make it, right? Yep. And uh, Angel has to make the tough decision. And bang, uh, father-in-law dead. And then they go off to, like, go save, <laughs> see if they can save uh, Beak yep. as they uh, kill What's his real name? There we go. Uh, Enrique. Is this El Rey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got to get the Exante Goose. They finally get everyone. So like the cool twist on this issue was they finally get everyone back to Kokoa. And when Armor goes to check on them, because obviously it's been super traumatic, right? Like you got shot, Beak. You lost your father. And I think his mother too. Like this has been like all your kids were traumatized and shit. And they go to check in on Beak and he's like all chill and like nonchalant about his family dying yeah how do you feel about this and then gives the line of dialogue i was like oh they they died years ago right and yeah. so like armor flips out because she knows exactly what happened yeah it was uh the m M&M m twins yeah. who went and fucked with his mind so yeah, i yeah. like it in the fact that like oh this is just proving how fucked up these guys are gonna be yeah because you can essentially erase so much shit and just like a- anyone that has access to the mind in this new run of x-men Already was crazy, but the fact that like there's so much information going on, like you can fuck up a lot of shit. Like yeah. not even trying to. Yeah. 
Yep. So, I, I, from personally, I liked how this one ended, and yeah, it really cool. Interested into New Mutants because now there's this whole morality ploy. Because like Armor tries to get mad at them, but can't. She's like, they're still kids, and she's trying to like figure out how to like Cause, teach them, like a, try to make a teachable moment, even though it's super fucked up. And they thought they were doing something right. Like, well, we got rid right. of it. And now he's yeah, better. Like, place, right? Yeah. Like they're like they're all happy now, right? It's like yeah, but it's happy not, in a different way. Yeah. yeah, that's not the fucking point, though. It's like that's, but yeah. Yeah, but they don't know that. Like they're brand new, right? Like you look at them like kids. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, yeah, we have. They're gonna be fun. Yeah, we have one more double feature, which is the X Men. Five and six. <laughs> so we'll do that one next. I oh, this be... is where like the Children of the Vault shit, eh? Yes. Yes. This, so and that's th- what it opens with Wolverine tracking Seraphina. Who is a member of of Children of the Vault, right? If anybody doesn't know, it's a highly evolved and highly dangerous superpower group uh, developed through exposure to temporal acceleration. Oh yeah, that's a that's an additional villain for those people listening. Yeah, another one. I know. <laughs> like, they're gonna make a list. Um, yeah, and so like this is definitely I like X Men because they always seem to be dealing with the next growing threat. Yeah. Every every other book seems to be reacting to what's going on right now, but these guys are like, okay, we got to worry about the next. Like, like they're playing chess right now. Yeah. So like this whole mission definitely brings in all the big guns and all the people that you want to hear from a traditional X Men book. Like it's Storm, uh, Scott, Cyclops, and Wolverine, along with like people like I didn't even know about their like power set and stuff. Right. Like Serafina, obviously the cool X twenty three. Since she's in this, Darwin. And Darwin play, and Sink, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Sink. They play uh, huge roles in this. Well, yeah, I don't know much about either, but Darwin has the adaptive power and Sink has Coffee Cat power. So they take those two because they can. They they feel that they can um, survive within the vault because they understand that the vault is a fucked up place. <laughs> yeah, a lot of going on in there, and I don't know if this has a connection to Nimrod or it's the next story that has connections to Ringo. But like, there's always a master mold. There's always a Sentinel. There's always like that thread of like, Oh, they're just going to make that machine that fucks us up. Right. So yeah. they're always trying to stop that person to make who's making that machine, which is fucked up. Cause it seems to be in this entire universe, like so many of those people that know how to make this fucking machine. Yeah. There's a lot of them, right? Yeah. All over the place. And it's like, you know, there's like 10, 10 master molds. There's like three Nimrods. And then there's like all the people that know how to build it. And like, right, yeah. like manifest it. Or like where they need to be. Like the, the Osiris shit. Like god damn. God, yeah. like, it never. It literally never ends. But yeah. the, the bulk of this issue is just kind of. Introing you to this new team. With X-22 saying that she is the true Wolverine. Which was awesome. Like I like that little line there. Because when she when Wolverine died, she was handed the man, the the quote unquote mantle, mantle yeah. and she's kind of she still is Wolverine in her mind, and and I mean, rightfully so, really. And yeah, and they got that great panel here where she kind of looks like Batwoman. So I mean, if if Malfer just want to take something and do it better, I'm all for it. Yeah, well, and we were talking from from the top about how this, some of these books have crossover mutants, and we're not sure how. Armor is a good example in this one. Yeah, she does. Because she's supposed to be in Nebraska. Nebraska, and here she is here. So I don't know if this. I like, mean, they this, got the flower. Yeah, exactly. I know. I know. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. I was. I love seeing but armor it, in action because I think she's a she's a really cool. I like her character. I think she's a really cool power set. But I was kind of yeah. oh, isn't she in yeah. Nebraska or she just she just came back from Nebraska and went right into this like. I'm and, not sure. and going back to what you said earlier, like that's the cool thing about the tweaks on the suits, right? Because like Cyclops is wearing a different suit in this run than he was in a couple other issues or stuff so like we don't really know the time frame like this could be two months apart or like two days apart so that could work for whoever's kind of master molding this entire run if you if you see that and you're building for something but even if you're not it's still kind of fun to throw these random people in left and right and just see how this mix comes out because again like darren sitch and x23 seems like it's going to be a fucking amazing like new x-men team that we're going to get in the next couple of issues. Yeah, which is crazy because they go, they tell you already, because not not too much happens in this, but it's a, a big, a huge setup does in terms of, of going moving forward. But when the three, well, I mean, when I say the three, I mean um, Laura Darwin and Sink, when they go into the vault, it's immediately written, like in, in the book, that they've lost track of them. Yeah. <laughs> So three months, they say what, three months 
five days pass, which is yeah, five hundred. Like they added a time thing to like once you're in the fucking vault, it even like it's even even more of a mind fuck. Which time, was- yeah, time moves differently. So they they were gone at this point for three months and five days, and in the vault time, that's five hundred and thirty-seven years. So <laughs> it's like it's be fun. So Wolverine, so Wolverine's gonna come back as. Old, old woman Wolverine, Wolverine. like she's <laughs> old woman Wolverine, right? Because old man Logan, old woman Laura. Oh, I got it. Um, and the cool, the final panel too is your boy Psych is kind of like, what was I thinking? <laughs> well, he's got that little uh, like Power Ranger setup where it looks like he's gonna be like it's morphing time, but yeah. it's too, like you you're inside of Zordon's head. Yeah. So, good luck. Um, like, but it's, it's super cool. Like again, because I don't really read up on these specific characters, the fact that they've thrown them in such a like fucked up place and we don't know what's gonna come out is can only be good. Like can only be fun as a reader. Yeah, and X Men Six, the next issue, does not cover it at all. No, and does not disappoint either. Because no, finally, this is a great one. Finally, we get Lady Blue, Miss Mystique. Mystique, and she's in it with like a passion. Like I loved this issue. It was so satisfying. This was really good, and it, and it gets right into it when Destiny tells her a dirty little secret. Well, they, they had been, like, placing this scene, like, periodically throughout different issues, but yes. not to the full extent. So, like, we knew there was something going on with Irene, and we knew, like, there was a conversation had, but now we kind of see what the fuck's been going on with that full conversation. And basically, Irene's just saying, like, y- you can't trust who you think you can trust. Yeah. So when they ask you to do something that you know you don't want to do, but you're going to do, make sure you get what you need from them. Which really and makes, that, which really makes Mystique the wild card in Krakoa. And she's always been a badass too. Like yes. saying that from when they were assembling the seats in like the first, like, like Mystique wants something and you guys aren't giving that to her. Like that's only going to come up. Right. Yeah. Cause she wants destiny back and they're everybody. She's a pre pre like a pre pre cognitive pre cognitive. So they're like, when I say they, I'm talking about like the council kind of like, nah. Destiny's Irene, Irene's Destiny? Yeah. Because I wrote, I wrote Irene out. Yeah, yeah. No, you did. Yeah, you did. But that's what she wants. She wants her back. Yeah. And uh, Charles and, and Magnus are stalling. They're just like, nah. Nah, we'll you know, do this thing and then we'll bring her back. This thing, with knowing full well they're not bringing her back. Right. So this whole mission starts off with them dangling that carrot again. I'm saying, okay, just run this mission. Go drop off this flower. Because this is, again, this is the ship that they're jumping it on is the Orchid, uh, Orchid well, the, Forge. The Forge is back up. And that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's a big thing here. And Director Devo, Devo has a monologue about uh, perfection and sending off a device to Dr. Gregor, who's still trying to resurrect her husband as fucking Nimrod. <laughs> so in, like, any, in any other title, what? this villain alone would have been enough yeah. to write all the issues you need. This this is like the afterthought or like the dude that they've been playing chess with because like we knew Nimrod was going to come back from the first run. So the fact that they like they keep finding ways to like, like he seems like inevitable. Yeah. Which is fucked because Nimrod's like the biggest asshole, right? <laughs> like, goddamn. Um, but, so they, they send Mystique in to one set up like a portal that we can get yeah this is this is yeah this goes back to uh the house of x stories like when they attacked the orcus forge mystique actually had a sub mission which was to um plant a cocoon gate in the forge right which i thought was fucking cool and she's been going back and forth through it this whole time just to to do like recon and shit yeah like they find like at one point she's standing over who's it Amanda Gregor or like one of the Gregors or something. Yeah, Gregor. Yeah, she's sleeping, and like she could kill her and like end all of this, but instead she goes back and tells Charles and Magnus like she was there. I could have killed her, but I didn't. And they're like, "Why did you kill her? Like, yo, you could have like ended this." And she's like, "Like, want- like exactly. Like, I I want her back, right? Yeah. Like, I want my wife great, back." <laughs> this was a great book for um, the power dynamics. Because you could see all of them flexing the way that they normally do. Like, um, Charles is, like, really just a mind fuck. Like, he's like, you need to do this for the greater good. Magnus is kind of a realist of, like, you're going to kill anyway. So, like, just kill for us. And Mystique's all like, yo, I, like, I have the power to do all this shit. But I'm not going to do it till, like, you give me what I want. Like, all of that stuff just played out so well with these, like, larger than life characters like these are all the pillars of like x-men for as long as there's been x-men right like yep. these three characters have always had pivotal 
um, connections to everybody else, right? If you do the if you do the Venn diagram, a lot of them are just parents, literally, to the rest of the kids that are going through it. So the fact that like mommy, daddy, and daddy are fighting, yeah, is so cool. And the fact that like Misty comes back and the one line I wrote down was, "I hate you, Charles. I've always hated you." I was like, that, "Like I love it because yeah, it makes that's so, so much her." Fun. It's her, and it's like you you see how like how Charles have been just fucking with people's minds from the jump, right? Like he's always been like, "You got to work with me, right? Like I'm the most powerful. You got to do this shit for me." And Mystique has always been someone to like play by her own rules. But the first one to like see through the bullshit, that's why you like respect Magneto so much. Cause he's always like, I don't give a fuck about like the politics of it. Like, this is what I want for my people. He's straight up and real like that. Yep. But uh, Mystique is all like, I can see through your bullshit. Like I hate you, Charles. Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're not the savior that everyone thinks you are. Give me back my wife. Yeah. Which is crazy. Cause like my last note is, for that one, is just, it just says Mystique about to bring the walls down. Yeah. Well, Irene's last line is burn that place to the ground. Yeah. Like, which I was like, and I was up. like, I don't know if it gave me chills, but I was kind of like, fuck, that's sick. <laughs> like, we didn't even I, talk about like she dies in this like issue and obviously they bring her back. Yeah. Like, oh, that, Mystique. Yes. Yes. Yeah, well, that, well that, 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 that was a flashback to after the, um, the Orcus Forge when they, when they, when they, they failed they the first time infiltrated. It. Yeah. When they infiltrated it in, uh, in the main time, in the I can't fucking talk in the house in in the house of X, powers of X, powers of ten thing. I just like that reveal because the like for my theory, like that proves that she's one of the, the pod people, right? Like she's not really right. a, a true true. But the fact that like it's so nonchalant now, like it's expected that okay, like everyone can do a kamikaze mission, right? Yep. But like they still haven't proven that everyone can do a kamikaze mission. Like I like that. That's in the back of my head constantly about uh, this run and shit. So, but I, I love this issue. This is a great issue. So let's jump to. Number Excalibur, number six. Uh, da, 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 da. Where <laughs> Apocalypse is brought back to life. <laughs> well, I mean, we we're just talking about it, so. <laughs> yeah. Dolphin Sound is now a pod version too. We no, got to make, we got to like no, take some time and make a list at who hasn't been brought back to life yet. I'm cu- I'd be curious to know who hasn't. Well, when we finish, well, right? I think when we end end off this podcast we'll definitely be talking about someone that we don't know can come back from life right like right and that's oh, a great yeah, thing about right, like right. this this like their releases of books on specific weeks like if you you can look at them up close and really get the story from what's happening in that title but if you look at them through kind of like the entire run you can kind of see these cool things of like I, i'm pretty sure uh in each run except for marauders somebody dies or like, and and sometimes they come back. Yes. But Mar- Marauders left us. Uh, well, I don't want to go there. When we talk about Marauders, it's, we'll do it. We'll do Marauders next. But let, let's just get this. It's more of a cliffhanger, right? So yeah, going to going to Excalibur. Yeah. So he uh, comes back and is oddly Mar- chummy with with uh, super Jamie, friendly Jamie Braddock. Yeah, and I was like, super friendly. That's not a combination that's gonna be good for anybody. That's. Not- I mean, hopefully for them for because them, yeah. they they basically like just. Like, Morgana just ends up losing in this one, right? Like, this is kind of just, like, a clean sweep of, like, oh, this was a war, but, like, now the good, the good guys win. Yeah, oh, that's right, yeah. When they, when, they, when they hop into Otherworld to right. fight her. But I, I just basically, I want to say basically because it's blued up Rogue that, like, does all the heavy lifting in this. All of it. In the, in the previous book, she had drained uh, Apocalypse, and now she's, like, the coolest version of Rogue I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of cool r- r- versions of her, but... The fact like this Excalibur click, like as soon as they enter Outer World, like they're all firing on all cylinders. And all of them are pretty damn cool. Like their power sets. Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna say it's a it's an interesting really work as a team. It's a complimentary one. It's an interesting team. If I don't know if it's a weak link, but in this fight particularly, I think you know wait, wait, wait. Time 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 you know who the weak link is. Fair enough. I know exactly who the weak link is. Uh, she's got a dragon, dude. So so Drogo's not a, a weak link. Drogo, 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 Drogo. No, uh, my my point was gonna be that's true. I we I forgot <laughs> Jubilee's part of it. Yeah, um, Jubilee's like because my point I was getting to was the Gambit spent way too much time worrying about Rogue in this fight. Right. Like, when she's like the most powerful mutant, yeah. like really right now that's ever doesn't need your help, Remy. Like, but that's okay. him. Like he's, he's like yeah. he's always like. Uh, chip in the shoulder, like I just I want one of me, right? Like, yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> he really wants to go back to banging her in the hot tub. Like there was a moment, like I can't remember what issue it was where they're just chilling in the hot tub. Yeah, that was and yeah. He's roaming around. He's like, "Yo, can we bang now?" And she's like, "Fine." I was like, "Yes." Like that's yeah, like Gavin, Gavin's having the best fight of, like run so far. This guy, he, honestly, uh, this may sound oh, weird, but I, he's earned it, man. This guy's stuck around and he couldn't touch her. Now she can finally control her powers. Yeah. Yeah, he, like, he put in the work. He put in and a this, lot of work, man. And this is coming off of Mr. and Mrs. X, too, right? Like, they gave them, they gave that duo a run, I think, 20, 2018, 2019, where they yeah. were trying to, like, essentially, like, give Gambit, like, his just just rewards. That's and, right. Like, and give Rogue, like, some sense of peace. Like, Rogue is just as troubled as, like, maybe Wolverine, but they don't play that up as much. No, she doesn't. She's had a lot of trauma, yo. Yes, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. She has not lived a normal life from jump. And it's off like the most simple thing of just like connection. I can't right? touch anybody. Yeah, there's been. Yeah, yeah. Like, Wolverine, they turned him into like a, a freak. But like the majority of it is like, I've lived too long. Like, so he's just seen people die. Like, he's just, just grouchy. Yeah, yeah. Rogues bumped into people on the subway and like killed people. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. like yeah. she's been rough for a long, yeah. a long time, right? So it's weird that they downplay like her, her mental strength. Cause like, that's such a cool aspect of how crazy, like awesome she is. She's a really cool character. I like, yeah, she's a really cool. Character. Watch out for the finals where we have Miss Rowe going up against. Womp womp. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was, I was, I was thinking about, I was thinking about dropping that when you start going on a little bit of a, a run there, but I was like, ah, I'll just leave it. No, jump in, man. That's really what it is. I got to support my uh, pick in this, uh, this finals here and it's definitely rogue I'm that's not it. fair man my pick doesn't have a <laughs> your picks in there you were talking a little bit about i know but her story is not nearly as good anyway <laughs> if, if we're talking if, <laughs> you're, if you're you so li- sad you're like oh no if you, well you listen because next episode is going to be the finals for the, the the marvel hero draft we were doing the long awaited it's coming yeah long awaited and the, and the two finalists uh meet in this comic meet in this yeah the, well they're in this con they're in these comics but they're Rogue's one of them and Silex the other, but hell yeah. Anyways, that's that's next that's episode forty one, so keep six for that. For themselves. They yeah. Go. I do appreciate though that's yeah, that's episode forty one. But I do appreciate I thought it was pretty funny how Apocalypse comes back with a cane. <laughs> he's, he's like a walking is like a walking stick. I was like, Oh, you never looked so meek before. That's cool. That that goes back to your theory that like maybe he's not full percent apocalypse. Maybe, maybe. he's nine ninety six percent now. But he, and yeah, he he shows up when they're game, yeah. He shows up when they're fighting Morgan Le Fay, and he's just kind of like, "Why well, don't I have a duel with champions?" Yeah, <laughs> he shows up to celebrate. Like he literally came off the bench. He's like, "Yes, I'm gonna go rig, right?" Yeah. And meanwhile, like Excalibur is just running the table, right? Like, there's even a nice little trade off battle between Betsy and Brian. Well, that's that's what he does. He proposes that he's like, "Well, how about we have a duel of champions?" Right. You Betsy versus Brian, whoever wins wins it all. Wins it off. So, so that, we don't that, do this fucking back and forth shit. That was Morgan's first mistake. Yes. <laughs> and then a dragon comes in and breathes fire. His bets, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Like Chogo just comes in and just burns it all down, right? Like, what do you, what do you, that. what do you think of this new Betsy? Uh, this I, I like think she's pretty badass. I like yeah, her. I like her. Uh, here's the thing. You want to talk about checkered past? <laughs> oh my gosh. She's. <laughs> And then they keep throwing ring. Jamie in their face too, right? Like we're totally underplaying like how how much of an impact Jamie is in this run, let alone in this world. Because both Brian and Betsy just have problems with this motherfucker, right? Like yeah, <laughs> he's always just been damn. Like families suck sometimes in comic books. Um, but in terms of like Betsy with Brian through the entire run of him being like the Dark Knight. Like, she's been struggling with handling the mantle and, like, still fighting. So, like, I like how they've been writing her. Like, they've given her, like, she's she has to, like, be a strategist and still understand, like, the moral compass of, like, she even gets the option of choosing the amulet and the sword. Yeah. Like, she offsets one to the, like, her brother. But, like, she's she's in the position of power now, right? Like, she got to make that choice. Like, I, I, I really like how her flow or her arc has been going through this entire Excalibur run. So do I. And remember when we first started this, I thought this book wasn't that great. And it's completely changed my mind. So I do I appreciate like I always like Excalibur. Uh, Excalibur is always like the fun, like weird. Yeah, like you're saying, Dungeons and, Dungeons and Dragons version of it. Yeah, yeah. Like that, that shit just strikes. So like I, I'm happy that like it's all starting to pay off. But yeah, like the, the Outer Worlds like, battle is just like... Other world, yeah. To, like progress the actual 
like real plot line, which is Jamie Apocalypse Rogue Betsy Bryant. Yeah. And yeah. like you're saying, our our two picks get get a nice little heart to heart here. Well, yeah, like they're trying to deal with uh, the, the ramifications. That, yeah. Yeah, that she's going to go for a fight to the death with her brother. <laughs> Which I mean, part? but again, like you get that the writer has to write that, but you read it as a reader, knowing that like in a couple frames up, like you just saw them like bring back Jamie and Apocalypse. Right? That's right. Yeah, but that's not really like a huge hang up in these comics. The but only it's nice, it's nice that you you get that her feeling like, oh, it's my brother, right? Well, Brian's not a mutant, so that's he can't come back. But doesn't he have like the? With the power of Captain Britain, didn't that give him like a whole other level to it? I thought like he became mutant when the pushback came back. Oh, maybe, but I don't. He's as far as I understood was the, the part of the reason why they didn't. There was an uproar for Betsy taking the mantle is because she isn't human. It's like, well, Captain Britain's always been human. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, he doesn't die anyway. Like no. Jamie comes in there and it's just like, all right, just, so. just retcons it. Yeah, he's just yeah, like, you need to come in cage uh morgan and now you know me and apocalypse are running shit jamie's such a fucking dick like i, I like i love i love when he's in the book older he, brother. i love when he's in the book because you really never know what he's gonna do he's uh very loki-esque but i think a little more charming yes yeah yeah there you go loki-esque yeah i like that um and now we really don't know what apocalypse is gonna do either no he's essentially just gathering land and people that are playing position for him yeah he 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 puts jamie in the position of like ruling other world it's kind of like okay and you're my you're my like side guy right like me and you are thick as thieves so basically that's my land too right you don't know what kind of deal like really apocalypse is setting up for but the comic's fun because it ends again with yammy getting some in a hot tub (laughs) yeah and they talk about babies too yeah like they're finally ready for like this new life. She's back to normal. She's no longer blue apocalypse. Yeah, she blue. loses the blue skin, and they talk about babies. Now. To her credit, she became that much more of a badass when she learned how to like control when to fucking um, basically like succubus and like steal shit yeah. and what she could steal from people or like learn from people. So again, another reason why episode forty-one, Rogue is just going to mop the floor with other people. <laughs> Uh, also of note is Brian and Betsy, they swap sword and amulet for the Captain Britain mantles, which gives Brian his own set of armor again. And a different set of powers. Yes. He's used to using sword. Yeah, and she gets the amulet, so it's kind of like a split responsibility now. It's weird, because I always thought, I knew Jamie was a mutant. Jamie? Yeah, and Betsy's yeah. a mutant. But they're twins, so you would just assume that Brian would be a mutant as well. No, Brian. Yeah, Brian's. Yeah, Brian's a, her twin. Yeah, they're. That's a I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure he's human. That's an interesting man. choice. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's human. And then you get the last reveal of fucking apocalypse with a little scalpel. <laughs> he's cutting open Morgan Le Fay. It's like, what the fuck is like? What's he doing? So I'm I'm waiting for a sinister to show up because if there's any uh, calling card, it's splicing mutants open. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. You think uh, sinister is behind any one of those several fucking sub villains that we? I don't know if he's behind them, but I think he's got. Sin- no, in if, if you're talking about Sinister, I don't think he's got. Yeah, he's got. I don't think he's behind any of the villains, but he's, like, he's he got. Made, he's got to make like vampire zombie blood. I don't know, but he's got stock in shit going down. Remember that um, Xavier, Charles, and, and Eric have given him like a. Excuse me, what he wants, anyways. They're giving him DNA to help with the whole. Uh, library of mutants right yeah but so we don't he's getting he's getting something he's not doing this because he's a nice we don't guy. know if that's gonna be good or bad like you're just giving them free dna of everybody like yeah well, that's what i mean so i don't know my, my point being i don't know how many moves he's making he's making moves but he's getting something in return he's not doing this because he's nice he's doing this right. because he's getting something whereas apocalypse i'm not sure what he's getting so he's you know he's kind of just come over and been part of the yeah. team but he's it's but like apocalypse, <laughs> apocalypse at least seems to be like moving the chains. Like yes. he's definitely like gaining land to be like, all right, like when we're ready to go, like I'm, I'm. Set up. That's Which him versus Sinister's not gonna. Sinister's not gonna make moves to gain land. He's gonna wait for somebody to do it and then take it out of their from underneath them. 
no, well, he's not going for land. He wants the people that inhabit the land. Right, like, right. If, if you have a populace of, let's say, zombie-eating mutants, like, that's going to fuck up the land. Who yeah. cares? Yeah. Um, yeah. And the, the best transition, I think, to go to uh, Fallen Angel 6. Okay, I was going to say this for last because it's the ending, but yeah, let's do that yeah, now. But I would have too, but we both didn't like this one. And I don't no, we didn't. I didn't like, talk, yeah. Talk it's, on, a, on a bad note. Like, I didn't like this one. So this, I don't This, this, this book stuff. went from, and it's too bad because I like Edward Hill too. This was a I good run. This was one of our favorite runs. It was the beginning. Off, the start, the starting is my favorite. And then it just kind of progressively just went right down the shelf. It's like, okay. Well, what do you, okay. So before we get into like plot, what do you think the, the drop off was? Like, what are you see, seeing it going wrong? Case in point for me, like, I felt like when they started to, like, introduce the religion aspect of it and, like, the connection to the scientific, like, it took away from the order. Like, there was already a level of Psylocke in the mental and, like, her battling her on this plane. But then they added, like, three other planes. And I was like, yeah. uh, the, I, I didn't like when that, I guess it was always meant to be a team book, but this should have been just a, Quanon story like it should have been just Psylocke doing her shit you didn't and like then, X-23, X-23 in this I like X I love X-23 I just don't think Quanon is in a good position to be like a leader she's okay. not a leader she's a she's and fucking she's only been back for like a year or two not and even. did fuck all in all of this yeah, he yeah just it, was just, it, it seemed like they just here's your team work with it whereas they didn't really let Hill do what he want i don't think because i've i've seen him write for dc he's written things right. he, and he writes katana very well and katana and and psylocke there's a parallel there right we could yeah you okay. know so i don't i don't know i, I think what it was if, just what if they made it um like psylocke had to like break out and rescue cable and x-23 that would make way more sense yeah because then it's just they're separated and it's just a solo mission for her to like yo i need more numbers or because this isn't like you gotta remember this isn't not, not you per se, but this isn't betsy this is quantum this is not yeah. the side like that we're used to this is the a different this is the like, you know what i mean she's damaged she's fucked that and you want her to lead a team with x-23 <laughs> like, yeah no that's a good point i'm like it's not i don't Especially just, because the early issues were giving us that other side too. Like they were, they were slowly burning us to like how her mental got her to this point. Yeah. Like she had her flashbacks and all of those were like really well done because there was such a different look to the rest of the book. The rest of the book is like dark bleak and like splashes of color when there's like fights, but like her flashbacks and like her whole butterfly shit was really like the separate story. That's like, okay, like this gives you a nice breath on it. Yeah. So like I was getting invested in her correctly. Like I'm with you with all that stuff. But then the X twenty three and cable is like, well, what's cable doing now? Yeah. And like was, he had, yeah. He had get captured <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> cable, cable did absolutely nothing. X twenty three was good, but she didn't need the like I I bitched, I bitched about this la I think last time we talked about it, I was like, she doesn't need this character develop. She's already gone through this. Right. She's already yeah, found did. herself in her own solo book and now they're like she's right back to being this she needs to be mentored because she has no i'm like quantum's not the person to teach her <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and to the credit uh mr sinister was also well done in this run oh yes yeah mr. Sinister he, he was basically yeah. just uh like the man in the chair or the guy in the like the the, the spinny yeah. seat yeah you just go check in with him and then he can kind of either help you or like yeah he was written well and sorry and Psylocke was written well too she was she was, she was cool in this but she just it was not the right fit for anybody well, until the end, like, do you want to get into the story now? Because clearly there's a lot to love about this, but yeah, they, especially they, with Apoth and like the split of Apoth, like the fact that yeah. it was two different versions of like that threw, threw me for, like, I thought it was Silver Surfer for like half of it. That's but right. Yes, they, you put Silver Surfer, you're like, no, that's no, <laughs> that's not who you think it is. Well, my first note is the team fights mind control dudes and Psylocke, the little caterpillar becomes a butterfly to meet Apoth face to face. Yeah. So she puts her device on that's gonna the one that sister gave her to enter the subconscious. Right. And to, to meet him head on. And he tries tries to shape change into things close to Quanon to get but I'm like Why? she knows that you're like yeah. I don't I that whole that that whole trope or I don't know that whole technique is so played. I was like, okay, she knows you're you she's in like this dream world and you're changing into all these different animals to like fuck with her mind and Carrie, like, like she knows what you're doing like it's not you know <laughs> it's not gonna and, uh, work and then he gets fucked up because of it it's like well very easily too i said uh she wrote like a uh, star sapphire 
except like she's the pink lantern yeah because, like, the way that they were drawn, like it because this book has been building up to like the stark contrast it's always been like black and muted purples but it'd been flashes of pink and this one was just like as much kind of brightness as you could throw onto it because obviously if you're fighting on that plane like powers are in intensified so i also got a little bit of like power rangers like this could have just been a power ranger battle where they're like make me big and like they just go battling at each other with a giant butterfly yeah. But they had a the couple of fun lines of like fight with fight the pain with love. Like her character development kind of like finishes yes. in this book. But like the way that she finishes the villain who like at one point like I thought was just basically a child abductor, which was like hella like evil, right? Yeah. Like, it was just taking kids and shit. But like the way it just for me it fizzled out. Like it like it wasn't yeah, it, did. And it, it almost listen, this is this is how this is how rough the story was. The story, the the this run is six issues long, and it felt like it was like two or three issues too long. <laughs> so I mean, you know what I mean? Like that's not good. That's. I want to move on now. You can't. You, that's no, there's no better review than that. No, is is this? And that's so. I don't know. I hope she does a lot better in Hellions because she's going to be featured in that book <laughs> later on. I'm already I'm already done with this. It this was like not two, good. Three books too long. Good, yeah. Good Appreciate it. And let's end with like a highlight. Cause again, I, this for, I think both of us, I haven't stopped enjoying and it never wavered. Like it was always like from first read to issue six, I've been steadily enjoying Marauders. I've never had a bad <laughs> notion for Marauders. I've always been like, when, when it was first released, I was like, okay, they never made a Marauders book before. That's cool. Okay. Leading girl is, you know, Kate Pride and, and Bishop's in it, and the team looks pretty cool. They got Iceman and Storm. I was like, this is pretty sweet. It's right. written by Jerry Duggan, who I, I've read his some of his other work, especially on Deadpool and stuff. It's very good. I was like, this is like a winning formula. And then when you when after the first issue, we learned what they were doing, and they were sailing around, figuring things out, like why the gates weren't working for certain and stuff. Yeah. I was like, this is really cool. And then she becomes and the And then just doing yeah. fun missions too, right? Like she was yeah. just uh, like picking up groceries for like half the expedition. That's too. right. Yeah. No, this, this has been great. I've, this has been one of the better, this one, this has probably been the most consistent, consistent. I was going to say, yeah. I decided to pause for a second. I was just thinking fun. of other ones. Like this has been the most fun. Yes, it has been fun. Swashbuckling. Like she, she made us like, she put respect on our name. Like I don't call her Kitty no more. No, I, I prefer Kate. Now, Kate. Yeah. yeah. Like all, all that shit is just great character development to the red queen. Like that's a like a B storyline. Yeah. Uh, the fact like she's in a position of like true power and, and great in this issue, a couple ships ships come to head and she sees how much struggle for power there really is. Like this was a great fucking issue. Yeah, and she handles her business because you hate monger and executioner are the two guys who boarded Kate's ship last issue at the end. And while they're brawling, that's how it ends. Yeah. Yeah, that, that they were fighting Pyro Kate helps she like saves Iceman and uh, pulls, him the, pulls him to the ground we and we keep forgetting like how crazy her power set is because we assume it's just walking through walls but she's so expert at like how many things she can really do yes that she's insanely powerful yeah like so when you when you don't you even question all the like power and positions of like power she's been put in it's like yeah like you you've dealt with some heavy shit yeah because when you get when you get like hand to hand like face to face with her she has so many ways of fucking you up. Like it, yeah, just like dismem like not dismemory, just like she could shutting though. down specific things that you're like, how does this work? And like she could kill you, but like she could really just we've seen her just put things in other people in so, so yeah, issues. I was gonna say you should, oh you have a sword? Okay, how about you like that in your <laughs> I'll just put it in your leg. It's like how did that it's just there. What? You know what I mean? Like So uh case in point, she's facing off against executioner and she does phase through right like he's trying to stab her with this electric shock bow staff and gets behind pyro instead <laughs> behind her hits pyro which is hilarious but the whole reveal of what's actually going on you get a the miniature like ship. yellow jacket yeah they get the yellow, yellow... And, it's, and it's yellow jacket I was like, yeah what? yeah and which... now now there's uh basically a spy in pyro that we don't know what it's going to do, but a tiny ship in a mutant has always been. I mean, add that to the list of things that X Men have to worry, watch out for now. <laughs> which is kind of, which is cool. I kind of like this one. I was like, this is something. This is something new. This is a good way to infiltrate Krakoa. Well, like, this this is just a time bomb on Pyro, right? Sooner or later, you're you're assuming something's going to explode or like expand. Yeah. We don't know when. We just saw it start. 
Yep. So like I again to Murata's like credit, they've passed the buck or passed the puck or passed the ball to every other character. And we didn't give a shout out to Bishops too, who they also added to uh, this team. Yeah, I, well, I, did the be- has- I, did, I did it at the beginning. Did you? Yeah, right. I just I haven't mentioned them in this issue, but I like I like Bishop a lot, and I like more love the Bishop, more love to all of them. They all have something to do. Like they're not uh, just kind of waiting to go fight or waiting to go do this quick plan. Like they're all, they seem like the most three dimensional, if that's fair. But yep. maybe it's because I'm having the most fun with these guys. Like I'm I'm invested in like what what's happening to Pyro now. Like face tattoo Pyro is hilarious. <laughs> yes, face tattoo Pyro is funny. There is a scene at you know at the end when the, when they stop fighting um, Hate Monger and Executioner and they get away. I do like that part where Kate is like, "I'm not, she's like, I'm not afraid of you, so don't let my next move go to your head." And she like runs away. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, they just threw over that like, they meet up with Pierce. Like Pierce is back on the board too now. That's right. Um, what's his first name again? Yeah. Donald Pierce. Donald Pierce, who's one of the Hellfire's like most something something member. Whatever to mean, like he's always been on that team. Yep. And Marauders is slowly turning into a health versus Hellfire uh, book, which is kind of cool because I like Hellfire Club is fucking awesome, right? Yeah, this is like the young Hellfire Club with the oh the sons and uh, yes. everyone. Yes. So uh, yeah, um, what's a Cho runs away? <laughs> yeah, Chen Zhao. Chen Zhao, thank you. Runs away, and then we we see those. Uh, four tiny kids like there's like four different levels of villain just in this book yeah yeah that's, yeah you're right that uh the four little kids i don't remember the name well yeah that, 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 that that just call them young they're, they're the ones that are um that set up to put yellow jacket into they were hoping kitty uh sorry kate pride originally but now it's with pyro pyro so like that ticking time box that ticking time bomb is with them then there's another one with uh, uh, Donald Pierce <laughs> and then there's another one that if you want to talk about it who the final reveal is at the end of the issue Sebastian Shaw but we kind of knew he's going to be an, a- an asshole since returning set up the whole thing <laughs> big setup but like his he, he really wants that seat on the board like that's all so bad and, and he's been getting he's been getting the raw deal since he's since he's been there which is understandable because he's a piece of shit but like the way they keep, I just I love how they keep uh, just out they outvoting him, right? Like they yep. keep using democracy. Like, yeah, I was gonna say that. I was like, I was like, let's put it to a vote. And he's always like, damn it, right? Like this is the first time like his charm and like him being the first or the highest level on Hellfire hasn't got him to get what he wants, right? So the fact that he zeroed in on Kate to be like, you're the you're the the root of all my frustrations is insane, and the fact that he's gone to such painstaking like this is a, a super elaborate plan yeah well because <laughs> so, we haven't we haven't even mentioned it the the the, the, the sh- ship they found that had donald pierce and chen zhao on it was housing like it had a whole lot of anti-mutant armor on board so yeah they, like so, a, they, so they bounce powers and can like basically block all the uh their superpowers from hitting you right? yeah so so kate punches Je- chen in the face which i thought was funny like square in the right in the nose, and they basically just throw everybody out into the drink. <laughs> like, yeah. okay, now we got it. Well, so, yeah, it over so they come and do the thing, and, and they're they come and do the thing, they come into the ship with the armor. And the mutants, are like, okay, we're going back to Krakoa, let's bring this to. And Kate's like, yeah, I'll sail it, I'll draw, I'll, I'll take it there myself, right? So like, I don't need a big ship, yeah, there, and I'll take this big ship. So, and they're like, so, oh, okay, well, so do you want some company? A pirate plunder plan. Pirate plunder plan. Say that five times fast. Pirate plunder plan. Pirate plunder. No, I can't do it. Pride's plunder plunder plan. Pride's pirate plunder, plunder plan. There it's the go. plunder that gets me. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> prize pirate plunder. Because I oh I did it. I did plunder it. that gets me. <laughs> plunder that gets me. Pride's so I, I what I like what I plunder. what I appreciate here is that Storm Pride. wants Bobby to stay with her. So like stay with back. stay with Kate and Lockheed on the on the trip back. She's like, I don't need a babysitter. Like not a babysitter. It's more like we're teams. Like this right. is just you watch over your team. But she's kind of feeling herself a little bit. Like you know, no, I'm, I'm I, good. I dealt with the not not even knowing that there's another villain now festering inside of Pyro. Right? Like 
this is another X-Men who's a little too overconfident, yeah. which is great. Like, it looks like all of those guys are going to get their comeuppance on the same day. And it, it burns her in the worst possible way with Sebastian Shaw stepping out. <laughs> of, of one of the armor. One of these suits. One of these suits and then... Netting up a locket. Lockheed, yeah. So he can't fly. Tossing him over <laughs> into the water. And basically doing the same with fucking Kate. And letting her swim with the fishes. gives her He basically gives her iron or concrete f- shoes and just throws her right over. And it's like, yeah, he has some sort of um, Krakoa wow. power because it looks like vines and whatnot. Yeah, it was like a little grenade he set off and it just it wrapped her lower body in vines and she can't, you can't phase through water. So. <laughs> and, and that's how the issue ends with her just fading into the, the blue. Good, good read. Really, yeah, good. really good, and, yeah. and him happy. Like, <laughs> I yeah. forgot about he's standing on the sunset. And he's just like, but not today. What's the full line? Um, da, da, da. Kitty screams out, "I will live again, only to kill you." And when I return, you will beg for my blade. And you see her slowly start to like drown down, and then you hear, "Perhaps, Kitty, <laughs> but not today." Like that's he's living in the moment, man. You gotta, it, gotta respect that. Again, another great issue from may go down as the best run and it's history. definitely the most consistent i would say uh, I that am, and x-force i don't I think. oh x-force is just x-force is just bloody good yeah. like yeah all puns included like that's like they gave me everything i wanted x-men seems like the most strategic it's like okay like this is what i read to like catch myself set myself up new mutants seem to be like they're going to be the ace in the hole yeah, they're coming around. I'm glad that Fallen Angels... Sooner later they're going to return to where the party is and they're going to be like really battle-tested, right? Yep. Uh, Excalibur is like, I don't even know what to make of Excalibur, but I'm enjoying it. Wolverine's new, and then we're catching a couple new ones. Yep, and I'm yeah. glad that, like I said, I'm glad that Fallen Angels is done because that was the weak link. Oh, the weakest link. Excuse me, so that one's gone. And then, yeah, we'll be getting some new ones. Uh, we get... X-Men Fantastic Four. Yes, that's the one. Yeah, so... That's right. That's the next one up in terms of new, new. And if you didn't love it's also Mar- getting, I think we're also getting Cable. Cable one and a Hellions later down the line as well. So yeah, there's some new ones coming up. But and a giant one. size uh, Jean Grey and Emma Frost. That's right. They got I that. I can only yeah. imagine it's probably going to be amazing. Yeah. I mean, if, if they know how to work, write these women. Amazing. And they do. Been enjoying them so far. They've definitely highlighted a lot but of Yeah, them. so that's, uh, three, that's our, this is our third one. Thirty-three. So we'll see you next time for the morning of X. Thirty-three point four. Hox box four. Hox box four. Hox box four. Ducks. Hox box ducks. Let's talk some hox box and ducks. It's the plunder that gets me. It's the plunder. <laughs> you knew meat. <laughs>